what's up beautiful people listening that remember welcome to the channel today we have this very interesting video and it's titled abc the view ratings premiere to embarrassing lows again hmm awesome i'm excited to check this one out let's check it out well, well, well. Imagine my surprise when the ratings are released for the first month of the Immaculate Return to the Yentas and it's another swing and a miss. Throughout the month of August, ABC was hyping up the return of The View. Even with Hollywood writers on strike, producers, they managed to put their half dozen brain cells together to come up with a little bit of creativity to promote the new season. They released this promo video on social media that featured America's favorite beauties. My personal favorite! She was heavily featured in this promo, Asuncion. That name it just rolls off the tongue like Donnie's lemon juice rolls off the steamed frame. The beautiful smile of Sun host and it was radiant as usual. Big Red, Joy Behar made an appearance. Producers, they were hoping that the manufactured ageless wonder would capture the attention of the real Big Red for a sponsorship deal. All the ladies were featured in the promo except the only star on the show. Every morning, hundreds of lonely women, they line up outside of the ABC studio in New York City, hoping to eliminate their problematic nose hairs by sniffing the fresh flatulence of the whoopee cushion. Producers at The View, they played a little trick on their audience with the promo hyping the new season. They know their audience is filled with low IQ viewers. They know their audience would be easily distracted by banner ads from Just For Men. Producers, they knew that these lonely women would not make it through the full promo. So they only included the star whoopee cushion for a few seconds towards the end of the video. This caused massive panic and hysteria amongst lonely women in America. Oh no, our daily supply of flatulence is not returning. Who will cure our nose hairs? Who will teach us how to defend against toxic masculinity with toxic flatulinity? Now to their credit, this promotional video over the summer, it did exactly what it was designed to do. It got lonely women and men pretending to be women talking about The View. But did those long hours of brainstorming and creativity, did all that hard work translate into increased ratings? <laughs> you know, two years ago, the Yentas, they were averaging 3 million viewers. Now us normal people, we couldn't believe it. How could there be 3 million people in this country that find toxic mouth farts to be entertaining? Before Lame. finding out about these ratings, if you ask me to describe the typical viewer of The View, I would picture the single mother who just became an empty nester. Her child just left home. She spends her nights alone with her battery-powered cucumber. She's very, very bitter towards men because they refuse to acknowledge her existence. And the off chance that she is acknowledged by a man... She accuses them of harassment. In terms of the male demographic, I picture someone like the Star Trek virgin Mike Freeman being a consistent viewer of The View. A man who is very feminine, he's in tune with his feelings. He works hard during the week fabricating stories of mythical racism. He spends his weekends on the internet talking with other nerds analyzing the relationship between Chewbacca and R2-D2. On those lonely Saturday nights, he has passionate dreams of Luke Skywalker taking his virginity with the lightsaber. In my mind, that's your typical viewer of The View. But with over 3 million people watching, that means that some of your neighbors are watching this garbage. That sweet older lady across the street who waters your begonias when you're out of town, she seems so nice and harmless. She's an undercover shit fuck. The single dude in his 40s who seems like such a nice guy your family constantly wonders why he's still single. Well, now you had your explanation. He doesn't have time to go on dates. He's too busy spanking the wanker watching Big Red balance that super head on her shoulders. Two years ago, View, averaging 3 million viewers. Last year, that number was down to 2.4 million. Before they went on their month-long sabbatical so plastic surgeons had plenty of time to perform their miracles, The View was down to a cool 2.3 million viewers. But that's okay, it's all good. There was a logical explanation for this decline. I mean, there's just so much competition on television during the summer, right? It wasn't like there was a writer's strike which prevented new shows from airing. There was also very stiff competition from the WNBA dump. That explains this decline of 100,000 viewers. Those people, they were too busy watching trash get ball to watch women who lacked the ability to make facial expressions. At least the dump divers had the ability to move their face. 
even though their expressions are often hidden by those thick beards. But it's all good. It's all good because this season was going to be different. Producers, they did their job. They had lonely women excited for the season premiere. All of our favorite women were returning. Alyssa the Farrah Griffin, she's no longer a rookie on the show. She is now a veteran pretender. Son Hostin was ready to take hypocrisy to a new level. And we can always rely on the whoopee cushion for quality entertainment. And there's two other women on the show who remain unidentified. One is a very attractive blonde as long as her mouth remains in the preferred position, closed. I think the other one's name is Navarro or Navar or Nazareth. Who cares? It doesn't matter what her name is. As of right now, Ratings have been released for the first three weeks of The View. Their first week back on the air, they made their highly anticipated return after Labor Day, the day normal people look forward to as the official end of the summer, the day normal hardworking people are given as a three-day weekend, extra day off work to close out the summer season. Normal people look forward to Labor Day. For the shit fucks, it's just another Monday, another Monday of being unemployed. Their big premiere week, our beauties, they somehow managed to lose an additional 200,000 viewers. Um, how is that possible? With all that money spent on promotion, with the Houdini-like magic of making the world's largest whoopee cushion seemingly disappear, how did you manage to lose 200,000 people? The view averaged 2.1 million during the premiere week, but our beauties, they were able to rebound. The following week, that number increased to 2.2 million, with 2.4 million watching the final week of September. I mean, this is great news, right? The Yentas, they are trending in the right direction. But through the first three weeks of the season, the view is averaging just 2.2 million viewers, another decline of 100,000. Last week, we were given another example as to why normal people don't watch this garbage. Last Friday was a very, very special day. It was the birthday of Big Red Joy Behar. Ooh! Last Friday marked her 1,000th year on this earth. But somehow, Joy Behar doesn't look a day over 900. There were plenty of celebratory items on the set. Cucumbers, the supersized squash. There was a master chef on set to grill the woke wiener, along with a master baiter to help with catching the fresh tuna. To honor Big Red, the women decided to talk about one of her favorite people, John Biden. Before the show, the ladies, they were notified that there seems to be some sort of a problem on the southern border. People living in Texas and Arizona, they have been complaining about this problem for years, maybe even decades. But now that it's affecting the elites in New York City, now all of a sudden, it's a real problem. problem. The clip I'm about to show you. This clip was promoted to the mainstream media as The View heavily criticizing Johnny B. Biden. Uh, let me go ahead and tell you, this was some very harsh criticism. The clip is going to start with Sun Hostin, Asuncion, sharing some advice from two border experts. These two men, they know a lot about border security. Matter of fact, if I was John Biden, both of these men, they would be on speed dial, or in his case, the first two cards on his Rolodex. But it wasn't all negativity. It wasn't all criticism of John Biden. The ladies, they couldn't point out the overwhelming negatives of this administration without highlighting the positives. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't know that there were any positives, at least not in that sense of the word. I'm positive that my grocery bill has increased by 30%. I'm positive that my new Forerunner takes an additional $40 to fill the gas tank. I'm positive that there are global conflicts going on right now that weren't happening four years ago. Of course, those were not the positives that our ladies were talking about. They were talking about the false positives. Watch for yourself. You know, Jay-Z and Kanye West said years ago, people will dig under the wall and fly over the wall. So I don't know why 
when everyone agrees that this is not effective, that we would spend this much money on an ineffective, ineffective measure. Right. What bothers me about this, though, and it's my, a big criticism of this administration and Democrats in general, is their messaging sucks. <laughs> so yes. the reason I say that is everything that's ever been done on the Republican side, this is how Trump won. Really, a, just a few words, Obama won on it. You know, hope and change, you know, like, make American great again. You've got to keep it simple. Now, how I would have come out and handled that is, one, I'd put Biden on the mic right away. He's a real talk guy. Put him on the mic and say, we're not going to take questions on this, but I got to be straight with you. Part of the reason that the messaging is bad, uh, I think, from Democrats, and I agree with you that they could do a lot better in tooting their own horns. Today, the job numbers came out. They are astounding. 330-something th thousand more new jobs. And Democrats in Congress, a lot of them, instead of focusing on that and celebrating that, the accomplishments, are talking about 20 miles of wall. So First of all, where was the whoopee cushion? You mean to tell me on the day they were celebrating the birth of the ageless wonder, Whoopi Goldberg couldn't even bother to show up? Was she deflated? Did she run out of gas? Maybe she had another rendezvous with the Fauci, who knows? And did Sun Hostin just reference Jay-Z and Kanye West when talking about the southern border? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> I like Jay-Z, I like Kanye, they're both legends in the rap industry, but I, uh, I'm not looking to them for advice when it comes to securing the southern border. If I need some help with lyrics, I'm calling Jay-Z. If I need first class production, I'm calling Kanye. If I'm looking to stop Rodriguez and Gomez from crossing the southern border, they're not my first phone call. Matter of fact, they're not <laughs> any phone call. As you just saw, the criticism of John Biden, it had nothing to do with his failed policies. Hell, they were celebrating his economy. Johnny B. Biden created 300,000 jobs. Celebrate good times, come on, but bongo celebration. Oh, uh, what they failed to mention here, the vast majority of these so-called jobs, they were government jobs, also known as woke welfare. The others were part-time jobs or low-paying jobs, for example. The WNBA dump, they recently announced their expansion. That is an example of low paying jobs. Dozens of new applicants, they will now collect minimum wage to airball dunks and miss free throws. And the anonymous blonde, she was criticizing our fearless leader because she said his messaging sucks. She said on national television, put him behind the microphone, let him explain his accomplishments. He's great on the mic. <laughs> um, excuse me? Come again? Did you just say that John Biden is a great public speaker? I guess the flatulence has really clouded your vision. Have you not seen or heard this man speak? I don't even know if you could call it speaking. It's more like butchering the English language. When George Bush was in office, the mainstream media was absolutely relentless at making fun of his speeches. They even came up with a term for his mistakes, Bushisms. But with John Biden, the media completely ignores it. Hell, The View actually praises him by calling him a good speaker. <laughs> These people think you're stupid. They mm. think you don't have eyes and ears, which is why fewer and fewer people are watching this trash. But give me your thoughts. Ratings for The View continue their decline going into the new season. No surprise there. Can anything or anyone save this show at this point? Also, what did you think of their supposed criticism of John Biden? They actually called him a good speaker. One of the worst talkers in the history of politics <laughs> is a good speaker according to The View. Sound off in the comments below. Oh my goodness. This, I had a really good laugh because this was quite hilarious. And Casey just made, like, made it fun. He made it fun. But all the same, you see the ladies on The View, they are hypocrites. And it disgusts. And I'm like, I, don't, I just don't know, but I kind of feel excited to hear that their ratings is declining and they, they don't have much viewers because, because people are, have come to realize and are seeing them for who they are how much of a hypocrite they are and it's crazy but all the same i would really love your thoughts on 
uh, regarding the ladies on the view and also regarding biden's administration what are your thoughts about it because everybody have got a different opinion regarding that and regarding subject matters or topics like this and i really love you to share your thoughts in the comment down below share what the useful information you think might be really helpful and until next time see you in the next video